Okay, so in this Mass Effect tutorial, we're going to be looking at the collision objects for each model and all the different kind of mass settings as well. So how one model interacts with another when it connects with it. So the first thing to do is open the edit settings uh, max file. We'll find that on Moodle. Um, and then if we look in our scene, we'll see we've got just kind of basic platform and this ball is going to roll down here. So the first thing to do is add everything into the scene. So if we right click and go Mass Effects Toolbar and then we'll just select everything except for the sphere and we'll set that to static rigid body because we know none of them are going to move. The only thing that's going to move is this. So we'll set that to be um, dynamic rigid body. Okay, so if we just hit play straight away, let's see what happens. See, it's very kind of unrealistic because this is ramping down and this is angling that way, so the sphere should just roll straight down here. Now, the reason for this happening is because um, by default, the collision is always can nearly always be quite dodgy. So let's select this big object here, and remember to come over to physical mes meshes, and then select. We try the different ones. We'll select convex, which won't work. So yeah, we can see that's obviously not concave, so it's not sinking in. We know box and sphere won't work. So we can try selecting composite and hit generate. And we'll see that's not right either because that's actually angling that down. So if we hit play, it's just going to angle it to there. It's not realistic. So we can try increasing the vertices and the levels. Maybe a bit further. And if we're just not getting it from that, oh, we might crash it now. Okay, so if we find that we can't fix it even with composite, the best thing to do is actually break your model down even further. So let's bin this and then we'll select our two sides and hit detach so we've actually now got two separate models, in fact let's even detach this one as well so now we've got three separate models so now if we apply select those three again and apply set of static as rigid body we should find our collision is much better. So let's try hitting play one more time. We'll select our model here and go to composite and generate. Perfect, it's nice and flat. And we'll do the same on this. We'll actually try box and see what it does with that. Okay, let's try composite. Perfect, and same for this one. Okay, so that's that collision sorted, but if we hit play, we're still getting some problems. That's probably because if we have a look at the collision mesh for this, it's probably not very good. So, again, let's try sphere and let's try previewing that again. Okay, that's much better. Now we're starting to actually get a proper physics system working here. So it's very important when you're creating your meshes and when you add them to the scene to make sure 
that you set the collision properly to get realistic kind of results. Okay, so let's open our Mass Effect Tools dialog here. Now remember, if we set substeps and solver iterations to higher, I've got mine 30 and 30 here, and we get a more realistic, um, accurate result. It does take longer to calculate, so obviously you might need to turn that down if you have a lot more uh, models in your scene. But that's where you just turn down substeps. Okay, so if we come over to edit, to our physical material properties, this is where we can set um, how each object reacts with each other. So let's try, see we've got static friction and dynamic friction. The higher these numbers are, the more likely um, models are to kind of stick to each other. So if I just set this to one and one, we select the base and set that to one and one. And we'll hit play on that. And there we go, we remember before the model got down to here, well now it's only getting to there. So let's select these again, this time put 0 and 0, and on this model, 0 and 0. Oops, make sure we reset our sim, let that go again. And already it's moving much faster than it did before. Okay, so let's try setting up these blue boxes. Again, down to zero on those. And remember before, it wasn't getting past this point. Now it's getting all the way to the end. Well, rolling, rolling off. Now obviously at the moment we have our ground plane set. Could actually turn that off so that the model would fall down. Okay, you, you let's have a look at some of the other settings. So if we select this ball here, Let's try putting our mass up to say 1.5. Let's see if that has any bearing on the scene. We can see that's moving a bit faster. Okay, now let's try adding another sphere into the scene. And let's select this surface here and have a look at this bounciness option. So let's try putting that up to 1. And we'll select this model. And we'll assign a dynamic to that. And we'll put bounciness on 1 as that. So that should mean now that this model actually bounces when it hits this surface. So let's hit play. And there we go, we can see that's bouncing. It's also just, oh, kind of broke a bit there. So let's try putting the bounciness down to about 0.5 for each model. I remember what we said before, whenever we introduce a new model, we want to make sure our collision is correct, so I'll just assign sphere to that. And for this plane model, we'll assign composite generate. We can increase our split levels higher if we wanted. Okay, so let's try that. What if we set the bounce on this model as well? and the bounciness of this surface as well.
So we'll see if we get a bounce at the bottom here. Okay, not really much bounce going on there. Okay, so remember you can pick from your presets as well for those, but it's always worth tweaking these when your simulation isn't working quite well. Remember you also have gravity here, so I imagine if we put the gravity up higher, it's kind of best to leave that on default um, when you're creating your scene, as long as you've done it to kind of real world scale but it can assist you sometimes. Okay, so again, if we wanted to actually bake this animation out, first of all, put our keyframes to higher, say 500. And obviously you can watch the play bar down here as the simulation's running to figure out how long you'll need. Okay, so we'll go up to say 450 and then if we come over to tools, set our time configuration to 450 and then do bake all. Then you can see now I select all these models, we have our keyframes all baked, everything working well.